in the Q and A session to discuss some of the topic. So I'll I'll move with my presentation. Okay. So today I'm going to talk. Uh, I'm going to give a small introduction about uh, Ind Indian coffee and uh, what are the coffee growing regions? Uh, what are the types of coffees grown in India? What are the grades available? And, uh, what what is meant by specialty coffee? Uh, why why this is important is uh, some of you may already know some of the contents of it. But uh, it is always better to know the product uh, before we start to see how, how these things are uh, uh, getting traded. And uh, the new thing uh, which is actually gaining up uh, more importance in the coming days is about the sustainability initiatives uh, which the industry is asking today. And uh, since coffee is uh, more international product, more and more uh, requirement of these initiatives are coming up. And then we move on to uh, future market, uh, like we hear about long and short when we trade about the coffee, then uh, a difference between the hedging and speculation, and uh, what is the future market and why it is uh, uncertain, and uh, what is the price risk and what, do you, what it means by differential, then uh, I'll try to explain a little bit about on uh, market, on the uh, Robusta market and the Arabica market, terms bullish and bearish, uh, trade, trading, what are the terms and conditions. Then uh, we move on to a little bit on switch, margins and options. Uh, what are the contents in coffee contracts? Like uh, when you do uh, contracts uh, with the overseas buyers, what are the uh, regular terms and conditions which gets into it? And all of you will have a question that uh, coffee is uh, sold in India, but uh, why uh, most of the international coffee gets traded only in USD, not in other currencies? Then uh, what are the quality uh, terms which gets used in the contract? How the contract price is arrived? What are the del delivery terms which uh, when we do international trade, we talk about it? And uh, then finally, when we ship coffee, uh, logistics is the most important, uh, most important part of it, and we move into the logistics. So th these are broadly the topic which uh, I would like to cover in next two hours, and uh, I'll I'll move on with the things. So just to give a brief, uh, India uh, today produces anywhere between 5.4 to about uh, 6 million bags of uh, green coffee per year. And uh, India produces both uh, Arabica and the Robusta. In Arabica, we are about 1.2 to 1.4 million bags, and uh, uh, Robusta is 3.8 to 4.4 million bags of Robusta. So, in 2021, uh, uh, exceptional higher production, we touched about close to 6 million bags, and uh, we are we are always between say 5.4 to 5, 6 million bags. So probably. With a better yield and the, uh, this thing in the coming days, we may see a little more higher production over 6 million bags. So, as such, Indian origin is unique. Uh, India is one of the few countries where both Arabica and the Robusta is produced. And again, in India, we wash both Arabica and Robusta. Okay. And this makes four different virtual origins rather than one sing single real one. So either it will be Arabic origins or the Robusta origins, but uh, India is special. Uh, India is special about uh, having all the types of coffee. So we are like India competes with Honduras for the fifth place. So if we look at it in the whole uh, coffee business, India's market share is only about four to five percent. So if we if we talk about uh, will it have any impact on the global market? So since India produces. Uh, only 4%. And so on an international market, uh, it, it has got a less influence on the terminal behavior. So having said that, uh, India still with a 4% coffee has got a, a good a good presence in most of the places. And uh, top producers are uh, Brazil, which has go, got both uh, Arabica and the Robusta, then Vietnam and Indonesia and Colombia. So then uh, we compete with Honduras for the four, fifth position. So globally, washed Arabica produced in India is considered one of the best other miles and is most preferred by the roasters 
in europe for their blends so indian uh, indian uh, indian arabica is known as the milds so indian coffee coming back uh, uh, indian robustas are considered to be the best in the world so like we say arabica colombia is the best and if we talk about uh, robustas india is considered best in the world the next best uh, competition for india in terms of robusta is uganda so if we look at it uh, uh, spread of the market so we will uh, look back to the data available with the coffee board we export to more than 50 countries so with european union having the largest share so india is not uh, indian coffee is not consumed in one specific uh, area or the region but uh, it is consumed in over more than 50 countries so speciality of the indian coffee uh, compared to all other origin is uh, it is shade grown uh, and it is hand picked because of the uh coffee since it is all mostly grown in the hilly regions so we can't do any automation automation so the coffee is always hand picked and is traditionally and is traditionally eco friendly condition and the production of robusta over the years is gradually increasing uh, due to due to better husbandry and yields so 90% of the indian coffee production is in the southern states of the karnataka Kerala and the Tamil Nadu. So out of that, again, Karnataka is the one state which produces the maximum coffee. So coffee is like it is shipped out of Mangalore in Karnataka. About seventy percent of the coffee produced in India gets shipped out of Mangalore, and Kochi is about twenty percent, and from Chennai about ten percent. So this is the topography. Hello. So just on the map, uh, if you look at it, uh, so the coffee is go grown in the western, western, uh, western Ghats in most of the regions in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and uh, Tamil Nadu, and this is split about uh, 82% of the coffee. If you look at it, gets produced in Karnataka, and about 13% in Kerala, and 4%, and other non-traditional market is about 1%. So Karnataka, especially the three districts, uh, Kurg, then Chikmagalur, and uh, has another three districts where the coffee is produced in karnataka and again kurg is one of the dominant uh, position with 40% of that coffee getting produced in the kurg district so if you look at it entire kurg districts uh, depend on coffee as an economy chikmagalur partly coffee and uh, they have got a uh, other crops which is grown in non hilly region has in is the same situation so we saw uh, coffee where it is grown so then what is the coffee we grow like we have got uh, coffee we have got two varieties so one is arabica and the robusta so around 25% of the production is arabica again out of that uh, 25% 75% is washed arabica or the arabica parchment or it is also called plantation coffee so either we call it as arabica parchment or the plantation coffee for the washed coffees and then we have got unwashed coffee also called arabica cherry is about 25% So robusta, uh, like a split between arabica and robusta, is 75%, 25%. And again, uh, out of the 75% of the robusta, only 12 to 15% is washed, which is called as robusta parchment. And rest all is unwashed coffee. So all the types of coffees are traded based on the uh, British uh, traditional uh, British system, which is physical objective variables and not necessarily on the cup profile. So in robusta, most of the coffee is uh, not traded on the cup basis so it's mostly on the physical part physical variables are mostly the moisture content screen size and the defect count so what are the grades so we have got uh, in so washed arabica or arabica parchment or a plantation so names are interchangeable uh, where different people use this different name for it so plantation a is about uh, 90% above the indian screen size of 17 which is 6.65 mm plantation b no screen but uh, maximum 7% flat bean is allowed plantation b is about 90 90% above screen 15 which is 6 mm and plantation c 75% above indian screen and bb is all the black and broken beans which are the rejects which cannot be exported so arabica cherry we have got arabica cherry a 90% above screen 17 6.65 mm And Arabica Cherry A B screen 15 6 mm and Arabica Cherry A 75 percent above screen 15. So robusta parchment. So in robusta parchment, the main grade is A B, which is screen 15 above 90 percent on 6 mm. Robusta parchment Tiberi, which is again uh, no standard screen. 
and the parchment C is about 96%. So then rubber structure is the same, rubber structure is AA, then uh, we have got rubber structure A, AB, and a clean bulk. These are all the grades which get exported. And uh, coming back to specialty coffee, uh, we have got a plantation MADB, which is 90% uh, on uh, 7.5 mm and plantation AA on 7.1. And India is a unique uh, coffee in Arabica Cherry. We, uh, this coffee is available only in India. Monsoon Malabar, double A, and we have got Monsoon Malabar A. This is about uh, screen size of 18, 7.1 uh, mm. And this is a super specialty coffee. This is not available anywhere in the world, and it is produced only in India. And rubber stop parchment, again, is a specialty from India. Not many or rubber stop origins produce it. Produce yes, it. there is some coffees in Uganda. There is some coffees in Uganda and uh, Tanzania, but uh, India is one of the largest producer of the Robusta parchment. And then we have the Kapi Royal and Robusta, Robusta Cherry Double A. So these are all the specialty coffees coming out of the India. So production trends, uh, uh, what is important? Like Arabica is uh, weather sensitive and labor intensive uh, to grow coffee. And uh, that is where we have seen uh, in India, shift of uh, coffee production from Arabica to the Robusta because it is a highly weather sensitive and labor intensive. So we have seen a big shift where uh, Arabica estates are all, uh, most of the estates are getting converted to Robusta and a strong seasonal pattern and Arabica has a lower yield and most of the Arabica are a larger holder. So if we look at it, uh, we produce between 1.3 to 1.25, 1.3 million bags uh, of Arabica. So coming back to Robusta, it is less weather sensitive and less labor intensive, mild seasonal pattern, high yields, and a small holding. So we have, if we, if we see the, from the figures from from uh, from two lakh from two lakh twenty five thousand tons to two lakh fifty thousand tons provisional. So uh, this is uh, sometimes has reached the highest production of about four point seven five million bags and preferred as it grows without requiring much of the care. So Robusta is much easier to grow, whereas Arabica is little difficult to grow. So what are the sustainability initiatives? You see today, uh, roasters are look looking not only the coffee, uh, they are also looking at how the coffee is grown and uh, what are the uh, labor uh, conditions and uh, whether the statutory benefits are all passed on to the workers and what is the gender equality and what are the safety precautions that have been taken care in the estate while going the coffee. So in coffee is not only they are looking at the coffee, they are also growing at how the coffee is grown and how much of the uh, 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 initiatives and how much of the things which have been taken care. And it is not only about the labor, it is also about the nature regenerative agricultural practices, the way the uh, 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 responsible use of fertilizers and chemicals. So these are all the uh, things which are focused on sustainability initiatives. So in India, the key sustainability initiatives which are happening in India as well as in the world are uh, AAA uh, program of the Nespresso where they look at uh, sustainability quality, okay, and uh, traceability of the coffee. And Ili Coffee is another major uh, uh, sustainability initiative which is happening. And the Rainforest Alliance uh, it is an independent uh, organization which has written the code. And the estates are certified by verifying the processes that have been followed on the estates. And uh, we have got an individual exporter specific programs. So, so most of the companies, uh, 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 multinational export, uh, they started to have their own code with NKG verified, with Olam and Decom, they have their own programs uh, coming up. And then we have the 4C and uh, Starbucks uh, has got a cafe practice. And now the new initiative which has come up is about the European deforestation regulation. Uh, so coffee which gets exported uh, from the beginning of the 2025, January, uh, which gets placed in the EU market has to be uh, certified that the coffee is grown in the non deforested area. So this is the one new regulation which has been passed in the EU regulation. And this is, uh, it is uh, seeking a lot of attention today. And uh, by, uh, by, by mid of this year, we need to have the processes to say that uh, 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 polygons has to be provided by all the farmers. 
and then uh, we have to show that this coffee is grown in the non deforested area so this is one new thing traceable issue initiative that has come not it is a, not a initiative it is a regulation which has come from europe it is not only for coffee uh, this regulation is applicable to uh, rubber and tea and other products also so this is one key key things which is coming up so these are all sustainability initiative uh, which are which are presently uh, been in the in the market so now i'm going to jump on to the trading part of it okay so now we sp we spoke about uh, uh, coffee is available uh, how coffee is grown and uh, as a india where we are placed and uh, type of the coffee which we do it okay so future so future market so what is future market so futures uh, are a financial contracts uh, which is binding on both the parties seller and the buyer to trade an asset okay in this case when we talk about the asset it is in this case it is a coffee future contract at a specific predetermined future price and the date so this is what is called the future price so i'll get into the more details about it in the coming slides so then we also got another uh, uh, product called the option options are like an insur insurance giving the holder the buyer the right but not obligation to buy the call option or sell put option the underlying security coffee future contract at a predetermined price so this bit complicated option but uh, we i'll explain that uh, in the future in the future slides so future market future market these tools generally remain unreachable to the largest group of actors these tools are generally hello can you hear me yes sir yes sir okay, sir. okay. future market so these yes, sir. these sir. okay uh, future market these tools generally remain unreachable unreachable to largest group of actors so small holder coffee producer who often lack adequate economic resources and specific financial education so access to this tool is also extremely complicated for non organized farmers so when we talk about a future market future market is a very very technical uh, subject and uh, these are all uh, we need we need to have a uh, proper knowledge of it and also we need to have economic resources economic resources okay so uh, economic resources is more about the trade lines outside of the india and the structure of that has to be there uh so the generally dis disaggregated nature of small holder coffee producers globally means they must accept the role of role of a price taker of this globally leveraged financial mechanism because they often lack the resources to participate directly so the global coffee supply base on which the whole coffee industry relies does not benefit from these risk mitigating and often price stabilizing mechanism the same way that the other actors in the supply chain do okay Mm, so i'll i'll get into the things again uh, one one important thing uh, from now on whatever i talk about it uh, uh, this facility is not available for the companies in india so due to uh, reserve bank of india and the government of india regulation hedging in the overseas market is not allowed except with certain conditions so that means uh, the companies who are based in india cannot use future market but is possible only for the large exporters if they have got a underlining contract and by taking a special permission from the reserve bank only they can use the future market so other otherwise otherwise for the normal participant there is no way that they can make use of this future market i think most of the coffee traders are are aware
Just one minute, please. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very well, sir. Okay. Yeah, audible. audible, right? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, so, so clearly, uh, uh, these tools are not available, but uh, I can, I can, uh, I can share you that the price mechanism which works in India on a coffee market are all linked to the future market which is available there. So, if you look at it today, the price mechanism which gets into the Indian market is basis the market in London and the New York. So, we have got two markets, one in London, uh, which is for the Robusta market and another is the Arabica market, which is for Arabica. So, what is the, we always uh, hear the word, uh, what is long and the short, okay? So, the terminology of a long and a short is commonly used in commodity trading. It's not only coffee, in any commodity market we use, we use the word long and the short. So, it applies when it trading a green coffee. A long or a long position is held when total amount of purchased coffee is greater than the total amount of the sold coffee. Okay. So, a friend, uh, if you look at it, uh, most of the companies, uh, in a coffee market, uh, the rule, like we said that uh, in the previous slide, we talked about price takers. If you, if you, talk, if you see in this slide, we spoke about the price takers. So, price takers are the commodity traders who are, who are taking a position. So, that means they act as a bridge between the grower and the roaster. So, there are lot of big roasters available in the whole world and there are growers who produce the coffee in different region so they, both of them has to be has to be bought together so roaster wants coffee before the season start so this means like in a uh, say if a roaster comes to a market in uh, september or october in 2023 he request the price taker or the exporter to sell the coffee for them from January to December of 2024. So that means when there is no coffee, the price takers or the exporter has to sell them the coffee from Jan to December. So that means when the amount of sold coffee is greater than the amount bought, this is called a short position. So that means in September or October of 2023, coffee is still in the trees. Coffee is not harvested, nor it has been sold. But at that point of time, roasters want to buy the coffee and the exporter has to sell the coffee to them. So about 40 to about 30 to 40 percent of the coffee gets sold even before it is harvested. So that is that is the role and the function which gets in. So also it can happen other way around. Roasters have the stock, they don't buy coffee, but planters have to sell, planters want to sell the coffee. In such case, exporters has to buy the coffee and go long. So that means he doesn't have the position on the sale side, but he still buys the coffee. So that is called the long. So if you have got a coffee which is not sold, it is long. If you have got a coffee which is not available with you, you sell it, then it is called the short. So I think I made clear made uh, things clear on the long and short. So then comes the next uh, next important aspect like uh, we hear in the markets are hedging and also speculation. Okay, so what is the what is these two words? So it is interesting to know. Hedging is often confused with speculation. So these are two different words. Hedging is different. Speculation is different. The Exporters concerned with unforeseen price changes. They decide to buy or sell based on their experience and how the market will move in the future. So that means when somebody asks a price in September or October of the previous year, the exporters visualize, okay, this is the price levels at which the planters are going to sell and keeping that in view, they are going to sell. However, their hedging is essentially means to avoid or reduce the price risk. Speculation relies on the risk of element. For instance, it would be irrational to sell future for hedging purposes if the market was absolutely certain to rise. But we we never know 
that market will go up or market will come down. So in case of a speculation, what happens is we buy a coffee and hold it. The price can go up, then you make money. The price will fall, you make a loss. So that means in a speculation, the risk is very high and the companies can go, can get bankrupt if if their if the if their view is not in line with what what the coffee has been bought so if you look at it most of the traders in a supply chain so if you look at it supply chain in india we have the farmers then we have the middleman uh, we also call as the hullers in india so they all buy the coffee from the planters and then they sell to the exporters so in between all the traders will be taking up a position known as a speculation so they were they buy, if they don't sell it to any exporter, that means they are speculating on the coffee. So this is what is a speculation. In the absence of absolute certainty about the future market development, hedging offers an element of a production against the price risk. Speculation on the other hand involves deliberately taking a risk on price movement up or down in the hope of property. One of the principles of speculation involves the opportunity for a gain. Okay. So these are uh, to put it in uh, put it in a perspective hedging allows exporter the amount of risk so that like any anything which is anything which is happening on the market movement is hedge i will explain you a specific excel sheet in the in the next slide which will give you a better understanding what the hedge means whereas in case of a speculation it is right i buy and wait for the market, either it can go up or go down, and you incur the huge loss or a huge gain. So speculation is always very bad in a commodity market. So this this chart gives you coffee. Coffee is one of the most volatile trading, like volatile. So it has a market and it is also volatile. So if you look at this slide. From 1980 to 2020, you can see Arabica market going up to 300, $3, $3 a cent. Up to that level, it has gone up. And at a level, it, which has gone up to 65 cents LB. So it is highly volatile. And what are the factors for the volatility? So this is one important aspect. Uh, we need to look at it. So volatility uh, comes, one of the key future is about the weather condition. One is like weather condition. So the biggest producer of the coffee is Brazil and any production disturbance which happens in Brazil, in Brazil producing area, it will have a direct impact in the future market. So it is also one of the first economic principle is if the, if the supply is more, the prices will fall. Okay. If the supply is more, the prices will fall. So, which is a demand and supply analogy in the economics. So, if the supply is more, price tend to go down. And if the supply is less, the price tend to go up. So, this is what gets clearly identified here. So, how to look at it? It will like if if you are not following the market, if you are not following the aspects which are going to impact on the market prices, you will have a big losses by taking the position. So you need to follow the terminals very clearly and the climatic condition which have which happens in these places. So the extreme volatility of the coffee market causes a drastic price fluctuation over the months, weeks, days, and even hours. So what it means, okay? Even hours. So the coffee market will be functional uh, European times for seven to eight hours a day. So the markets are functional every day, five days a week. So that means even within the trading uh, trading hours of eight hours, within the trading hours, the prices can prices can change, and it can change over the weeks and over the months. So high coffee prices encourage production growth. Low prices uh, result in falling output. So this is also one of the counts. So as as I mentioned, economics about uh, uh, higher prices, uh, higher uh, higher supply, lower prices. Same way, lower prices will 
automatically uh, bring down the production, thereby tightens the supply. And volatility prices makes planning difficult and risky given the length of the time it takes from flowering to the harvest. So the coffee, uh, if you look at it, the whole of this picture, uh, we are, like it takes about eight to nine months uh, minimum for, from the flowering type to the harvesting time when it starts. And also different regions in the globe has a different production cycle. So India, India has got a harvest cycle from say, uh, December to February, March, whereas the Brazil, the harvest cycle starts somewhere in April, April, May, June. So it is like the coffee flow is also not always at the same uh, across the origin. So we need to understand that different origins has got a different uh, uh, production cycle and the coffee supplies to the market will also have a similar situation, which comes in a different parts of the time. So this is what it talks about the fluctuation for the months. So price risk and differential. So future contract is a standardized in terms of the quantity and the quality of the commodity. The future price represents an average range of qualities and therefore an average price. So what it what it means? So standardized in terms of quantity and quality of the commodity. Okay. So if you look at it, uh, we have got a robusta, uh, for example, India, and we have got a robusta in Indonesia, robusta in Vietnam, robusta in Uganda. So there is no separate future contract for each of the countries. So since these contracts are traded in the London, there is only one London Robusta contract. So there is no contract for a specific origin. Okay. The future price represents an average of all the qualities and average price of a different origin. The price of each individual origin and even a quality of the physical is almost never the same. It may be higher or the lower. So if we, if we talk about it, uh, the price, what it gets uh, paid in India may not be the same in Vietnam. So if you look at it, the quality of the Indian Indian robustas are better. So normally the coffee price, what a farmer gets uh, to the market is lesser in Vietnam and is higher in India. Okay, so same thing is with the different qualities. For that matter, if you look at it, the price of the Robusta cherry or the Robusta parchment is not the same. The price at which Robusta parchment gets traded is higher. But for all these specific things, there is no separate contract in the futures market. So future market is only one Robusta market or one Arabic market. So prices for physical coffee often fluctuate quite independently of the future market. So the physical premium or a discount, also known as a differential, represents the value the market attaches to such coffee compared to the future market. So this one, to give you an example, uh, example say today the market is about $3,000, okay? Uh, to, uh, and at today's currency, at say about 83 rupees, the farmer should be, uh, farmer should be getting about, uh, into eight, 2, 240 rupees per kilo. Just to give an example, I'm giving a hypothetical exa example. Mathematically, it may not be right or wrong. Okay. So today at $3,000 London market at 83 rupees exchange rate, farmer is supposed to get about 240 rupees a kilo. To take an example. Today, planter is getting 260 rupees. So the 20 rupees is the premium what is going to get over and above the future market. And that 20 rupees is, is known as the differential. So the meaning of the differential is what the price at which you can sell in export market minus the terminal, the difference is the premium. So if it gets lesser than the terminal market level, then it is called a discount. If it gets more than the terminal market, it is going to be called as a premium. So I think, uh, I made things uh, different. I, I gave a proper definition of the different, differential. This price differential can be higher or lower than the future price and reflects local physical condition as well as coffee quality and the grade. So here are two things we need to understand. Like uh, this future market, uh, there is a market which uh, which is like a similar to give an example of a stock market which operates every eight hours, all the five days uh, week. And that keeps changing on various aspects of it. At the same time, local physical 
condition also. So differential is also not true. It is not that Indian differential will always get plus 500 over. Okay. It is not, it is not fixed also. So even the terminal is not fixed, even the differential is not fixed. So that is the view which happens on the global demand supply and the local demand and supply. So sometimes uh, even the market also can go up, even the differential can also go up. Sometimes both can come up. So a combination of everything is possible. So this is what is a, a differential a differential trading which gets in trade in the physical market. So as I explained the previous slide in the coffee trade price list therefore has two components. The underlying price is the price of the corresponding future market. The future price may rise or fall, which is purely a London or the New York market. The differential risk or the basis risk, the difference between the price on the physical coffee market for a particular quality or origin and the price on the future market is known as a differential. The differential price has its own dynamic and may increase or decrease. What is what is the differential tra differential trading? Okay, I just took some uh, historical uh, uh, data. Okay, so this is this is in 2021. So please don't get uh, afraid about the numbers here. So if you look at it, so currency was at that point of time about uh, 73 to US dollar. Okay, and this is the quantity, and the market at that point of time was about uh, 1451 London market. So, if you look at it, uh, the differential was uh, 314 and price in INR terms was coming to 115 a kilo. So, for this 230 tons, the total value in US dollar was about 406. 406. How, how this whole of the trade which happens? So, I'll just uh, try to explain, explain that. Can so, you show this on full screen, please? This is the full screen only. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, as, uh, as you soon as can, I, sorry to interrupt, sir. You, uh, there is an option to zoom in just by the way, so you can zoom in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, sir. It's fine. I'll try. It's fine now. Much better, sir. Much better. Okay. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So, if you look at it, so when when a uh, trader, coffee trader buys a physical coffee, so on this day when he buys, immediately on the same day, okay. So how how the price risk is being managed, okay. Uh, so on the same day, as soon as the market opens on the same day. This coffee is hedged at 1451. So it may not be 1451 exactly because as soon as the market opens, it can open $10 more or $10 less or $20, $100 also. But I'm taking a hypothetical situation which is in the most optimistic situation. So we buy at the market and we sell the market. So once we do this, we buy a physical and we sell, when we sell the future. If this market goes up to even 1800, even if it goes to 2000, or if it falls to even 700, for an exporter who does the hedging business will not have any loss. So, hypothetically, in most of the cases, when a uh, when a commodity trader buys a coffee in physical, he uses the future market to hedge the market risk. So, he buys coffee and he sells the future. Okay. And at the future price is 334 K dollar in terms of the value what he does it. So this is the activity which has happened in the May, March. So he gets the opportunity to sell this coffee in the month of May. So in the May, the market from 1451 has moved to 1600 here. Okay. On that day, he, the differential which was 314 has come down to differential 275. Okay. So that means he is able to sell at uh, sell at only 431k at this point of time. So the coffee which has been bought at 151, okay, yes, like coffee bought at 416, he is selling at 431. The terminal has gone back to 1451 to 1600. So when he sell a physical, he buys he buys back the future. So at 1451, he sold the future here. He buys back the future here. Here he buys the physical. He sells the future. 
what happens so in terms of the physical uh, he made a he made a gain of $25,000. So, physical we are talking about uh, from uh, from 416 is what is purchase price. It has gone to 431. He makes a gain of 25,000. And future, he sells, uh, he makes a loss at 34,000. And he has a trading loss of $8,975. Just to give you some more clarity on it here. So, if you look at it, the differential uh, when he bought was 314. When he sold, differential is 275. He made a loss of $39. So, he lost $9,000 in this trade. So, that means although the market gone up from 1451 to 1600, in effect, the commodity trader lost about $9,000. So, why this is required? Required is you cannot take risk like if, if he has not hedged it so 150 dollar he would have made loss at the same point of time the other side of this if the market has fallen he is going to incur the same amount of 150 dollar loss so in a commodity trading always they use a future market to counter hedge the risk so always they hedge the risk in the market and they are going to work only on the differential so that way your profit or the loss is minimized at the same time the risk is also protected. So, if you don't hedge in this way with the terminal market, then it is a total speculation which happens and that will have a bigger impact for the financial thing. So, in most of the commodity trade, not only coffee, any commodity trade, if you look at it, they follow the same methodology of the hedging mechanism to do the trading. So, I will little uh, get back into the contract. Uh, what is the London Robusta contract? Uh, the Robusta coffee future contract is used as a global benchmark for pricing of the physical Robusta coffee. It is, it is actively traded by producers, exporters, trade houses, importers, roasters, management, as well as the institutional and the short term investors. So, this is the activity of the future market, all the participants who are the producers, exporters, trade houses, importers, roasters, and management. So, all these participants are actively participating in this future market, and they use this as a tool to minimize, to control their price risk. So, following removal in 82 exchange controls in UK, the London International Financial Future and Option Exchange was set up to help the market participants better manage exposure to both foreign exchange and interest rate volatility. In 92, it merged with London traded option market. In 96, it merged with London commodity exchange. This is when the soft and agriculture commodity contracts were added to the financial portfolio. So, contracts currently traded in uh, London market are the cocoa, robusta coffee, white sugar, wheat, barley, and petrol. So, these are all the contracts which is getting traded in uh, in London in London market along with the coffee. But by far, uh, coffee and cocoa are the two biggest contracts which is which gets traded in. Robust tower in London market. Just to uh, give you some more uh, thing uh, which was not clear, uh, explained in the previous slide is London terminal contract months. So we have a, we have a contract months. Uh, London has got Jan, okay, and we have got a contract in March, May, July, September. Of contracts which is getting traded in the market are these are the terminal months in a year. So I'm talking about in 2024 at present in the London terminal, Jan, March, May, July, September, November, and Jan 25. So these are all the contract months. So if you look at it, look if you look into the uh, any of the coffee reports uh, today, uh, so it talks about these are all the terminal months which are getting traded. So each terminal month gets traded, and why? So many terminal months. The thing is, if you are giving a physical delivery, if you are giving a delivery of a November and December, the price will be basis January terminal. If you are giving January and February delivery to an roasters or to an importer, then the price has to be looked into the March terminal. 
if you are giving march april then it is going to be may so similarly like if you are doing november and december of 2024 then the tamilar month again next week the price is fixed is about like jan 25 so you will look at it here uh, important aspect like if you look at it uh, january is 2611 okay and march is 2546 May is two five zero three, then uh, July is two four six three. So these are all the. Uh, if we look at it, if any specific questions, then I am seeing some chats. No, sir, Hello. Please continue. Have the Q and A session towards the end of end of the session. Okay, fine. Okay, so if you look at it, so if if you are giving delivery in November, December, you are getting a higher price at two six one one dollar. Okay, and if you are giving uh, March, you are getting a lesser. Okay, so normally these terminals are supposed to be. On a carry market, so that means if I carry the coffee from two six one one for two months, I am supposed to get a warehouse charges plus the interest rate for two months. So normally the market should be uh, here instead of two six one one, your mark should be at least forty dollars. It should be two six four five two six five zero level. It should be there. Okay. So then we call it as market on carry. So that means if you look at it, the uh, so market is on off carry. So like like two six one one to two three nine four in January twenty five. If you look at it, market is inverse. Market is not on a carry. Okay. So what does it give? What are the what are the uh, So sorry, sorry for uh, getting a little uh, distracted. So market should be carry. Market is not on carry. So what it reflects? Okay. So looking at the structure of the market, it looks like the demand for the coffee is very high by nearby. So that means there is a in a demand and supply, the market is much low. Market has got a demand in the nearby. And a lesser demand in the coming months. So this is what it reflects market when it is not on a carry. So if the market is on full carry, so that means there is enough stock in the market and there is enough coffee in the uh, in the market to supply. So if you look at it, even this year, Robusta especially for last one one and a half years, we are seeing a very tight inventory situation, and that is one of the reason we see there is a higher demand in the nearby and the prices are higher. Okay. Now the next question is I just pulled up a what is the indicative differential. So when I talked about terminal, when I talked about the differential, this is the total price. What the for what the exporter gets. So if so two seven eight one dollars at eighty three rupees. So far like uh, the price which exporter realizes about two hundred thirty rupees. So if you look at it in the subsequent month. He realizes much lesser than two hundred thirty rupees. So if you look at it, uh, this is just an example. Okay, uh, what it means here? The question: How the pricing pricing works to the local market? So terminal is this, and uh, this is what is the uh, differential? What is getting traded? And this is the exporter. What is going to realize today? And exchange rate. So exchange rate is also important. At a spot rate, I get this price, and this is the price which exporter is going to realize. Exporter is realizing this price. So then, exporter, what he does is out of this, he he deduct all the cost. So what are the major cost which which the uh, exporters are going to deduct? One is you have got the cost of curing, uh, which is all there is a. Uh, coffee curing association which announces this this should be my uh, curing charges okay and then you have the cost of coffee which has to be shipped from factory to the bangalore port which has yes, got a fop cost 
and then you have got a port uh, port expenses which is a terminal handling and lot of other thing and then you also have got a but a cost of a interest which like you buy you have to buy a coffee you have to export and get it back and uh, till you get a payment you have got a interest which you have to pay so all these costs are going to be deducted from this price and that is the price which farmer finally gets into it okay so this is the pricing mechanism so you have the terminal market into it you have the currency so here uh, uh, terminal is terminal is always fluctuating differential will be fluctuating currency is also going to get fluctuate is also fluctuating see currency has got its own uh, aspects for its trading so currency is getting traded on every day so depending on the total other economical situation the currency also gets uh, will be getting traded so that means all the elements are variable or not speculative okay and what the only factor which is uh, clear is about the cost of sourcing and the cost of putting on a free on board which is more or less stable for one of the one for every year and that gets deducted and finally that is where the farmer gets a price so the whole pricing mechanism for the farmers is very transparent and uh, and uh, they get paid basis what it gets traded in the international market clearly and it is the same pricing mechanism also in the even when you, when you uh, sell a coffee in the local market these are the basis for you to calculate and you also have to calculate which month you are able to ship and what is the price you are going to get it so those are all the aspects which has to be done to get it. And another aspect is uh, probably you all know that uh, probably who are in the trade they know that uh, there is a concept called the first notice day. First notice day is uh, for a contract of a march. The mark uh, fixation in the market ends on the trend, ends on the previous month. So all the mark although the terminal is uh, functional till the march contracts are open. If by 26 the fixation again that terminal gets over so that means before 26th of february you need to fix all the open positions of the contract against those terminal months so this is also one of the important aspect each month each each contract has got a first notice day within which it has to be done and internationally if you don't fix this coffee you have the liability to deliver the coffee to the future market so in a in a future market say uh, say you don't have any order sales order you don't have and you are finding it difficult to find a buyer for it, the trader or the exporter or the importer, whoever is there, if you have got an open position, can deliver the coffee contract to the terminal. And the terminal has got its own regulation, which I don't get into the details of it. Uh, they have got a premium and the discount and the specific qualities, and there are various ports in which the coffee is accepted for the tendering. So we call that process as the tendering where uh, you don't have to uh, be afraid that you are not with the sales order then the coffee can be delivered to the future market so that is called uh, as a process of tendering and uh, those uh, terms and conditions of the tendering i don't uh, discuss because it's more technical and very exceptionally those things happen so that's the reason i don't uh, discuss that in in this presentation So we spoke about uh, London market and uh, one more aspect in the London market uh, quantity which gets uh, traded is USD per metric ton. Okay, the lot size in London market is 10 tons per uh, lot size is 10 metric tons per lot. Okay, and these all traded in USD metric ton. So then comes uh, we spoke about uh, New York future market. Uh, sorry, London future market. Now uh, we'll get into a New York Arabica contract. So in London it is only the Arabica which get, sorry which is which is only the robusta gets traded. In New York it is only Arabica which gets traded. So it is pretty clearly uh, pretty clearly bifurcated. London is for robusta and. Uh, the New York market is for Arabica contract. The, it is also called as Coffee C contract, uh, global benchmark for Arabica coffee. The contract prices physical delivery for the exchange rate being is from a licensed warehouse we, in one of the 20 countries. So Arabica, you can tender in most of in 20 countries. 
to one of the several ports in United States. And so 20 origins are recognized by the sea contract, uh, 20 origins. And you can uh, tender it to several ports in U US, Europe with stated premium and discount at the ports in the bros. Okay. The original coffee exchange of city of New York was founded in 1882 to deal in future contracts of Brazilian, Brazilian Arabica. The New York Board of Trade was established in 88 as the parent company of the coffee, sugar and cocoa exchange and cotton exchange. So in New York, it's more about coffee, sugar, cocoa and cotton. So the structure of this market, uh, so we saw in London, you got a contract every two months, but in New York, you got a contract in a year. So when you when we saw London market, we have Jan, March, May. So in New York, it is you got a contract in March, then you got a contract for May, July, then it is September, December, and then it is March. So you got a lesser months of a contract in New York compared to the London market. So that is the difference between a London and the New York. Again, uh, physical delivery months uh, for Jan and Feb it is March, March and April, May, May and June again, July, July August is again September. And then September, October, November will again go against December, and deck Jan and Feb goes against the March. And here, the price comp price uh, price at which these markets traded at cents per LB, and per lot here is about 17 tons per 17 metric tons. So in London market it is 10 per it is 10 metric tons per uh, per lot. In New York market it is 17 17 uh, metric tons, and there it is traded at USD per metric ton. Here it is traded as USD LB cents. So these are all the so it's the same explanation uh, which uh, which I gave you. If you if you look at it here, uh, it's the same situation. Market is not on here. Uh, in December it is in carry, not in carry again. Okay, so even New York market at this point of time was off carry. So indicating that uh, there is a uh, supply issue in the short term but right now as of today when we are talking about the market has come back to carry after may okay so this keeps changing about the structure and it's all the same pricing mechanism which i explained in the lender market and prices from here gets converted and you reduce all the expenses with the exporter incurs for sourcing the coffee and exporting and that is what the price gets paid to the farmers So, whoever is familiar with the stock market, we talk about uh, bullish and bearish uh, to describe about the market. Uh, I'll just try to give an explanation why it is animals in coffee about bears and bulls. Uh, so, commodity and financial market uh, uses expressions such as bullish when the price rise are expected to do so. So, if we expect the market to go, we call it as a bullish market. When we expect uh, market to come down, we'll call it as a bearish market. Bears and bulls are symbolic of the way these animals uh, treat their enemies. So, so bears bring them down, whereas the bulls lift them up. So that is that is where the word has come. Uh, word has come for bullish and the bearish. So some of the export contracts so overall uh, doing some exports. So they'll all be should be familiar with these terminologies. Uh, trading at price to be fixed. So you, you talk about. Uh, uh, the, the contracts are always different. Contracts are always uh, traded on the differential, and uh, they they say that the price to be fixed by either the seller's call or the buyer call. The trading described above assumes buyers and the sellers work with the fixed or out rate prices are focused on the primary market or the price risk implied in the future market price. So, whenever uh, any exporter is negotiating the price. 
uh, I, either you can uh, say this is my outright price at which I'll sell this today and buyer also has to accept it or, um, or they are going to fix a differential and they say that the price has to be uh, terminal has to be fixed at either the seller's call or the buyer's call. So these are on the terminologies which are commonly used in the copy trade. So either it is outright price will be fixed or differential is fixed, then market fixation at either the buyer's call or the seller's call. So it is a, if we sell at a seller's call, exporter has the option to fix the price at, at the market on the day and the time which he feels is uh, right for him. Okay, in case of a buyer's call, so buyer has the right to fix the, uh, fix the market at any point of the time. Next is uh, next is hedging cannot offset the differential risk. So as I explained in the previous slide, we hedge it. So hedging will offset the risk of the terminal market. So it uh, when he, if the terminal market goes up or comes down, hedge since we have hedge of physical position against the market, the market risk is always hedged. But hedging like a differential risk is never hedged and the exporters work only on the differential risk. In recent years, growing volume of physical copy has been traded at prices that are to be fixed against the future market. These contract types are called to be price to be fixed contracts. Okay, so that means uh, uh, exporter always has the risk of the differential, not of the market. And as I explained in the initial stages, uh, not all the Indian exporters, because of the regulation in India, cannot hedge in London or the New York market unless they have a specific approval from the Reserve Bank and the government. So then like the Reserve Bank has to give a specific approval that so-and-so exporter can hedge his risk in the terminal market with the underlying contract. So those are all the administrative things uh, which the exporter has to take care of it. Otherwise, uh, otherwise they cannot hedge in the terminal market. So there is also a word called as against actuals. Uh, against actual means uh, both the buyer and the seller of the green copy must have a future account. They need to agree to make a future transaction to a specific price of the exact same futures month and the lot quantity and different broker of the each party is using. So this means that uh, roaster needs to have a account, exporter needs to have an account, and then they say, okay, I will I will fix the contract at the actuals on the day's trading range. So that is what is called as the against the actual. So switches, okay. So I will go back, uh, go back to the slide. So if you look at it, uh, it is also gets into a position where, where you have sold a copy against the January terminal. Okay, but if you are not able to give delivery at this level, at uh, for various reason, then you need to like also uh, we spoke about here the first notice day period. So before the first notice day period, before the month in a December, with the December BL we need to give it. Uh, importers so if we are not able to do it then we need to switch the contract from january to march time so that means uh, he gets like exporter gets paid lesser uh, is one of the situations where we use the switch so we would have hedged against the jan before the first notice day period if you are not able to give a, able to give a delivery and if you want an extension to be done then this contract has to be switched from january to march time so that means you are going to lose value from uh, 2611 to 2546 and that's the loss which the exporter has to bear in mind. So that is a, this is one of the situation where you are going to use the switches. Okay. And the other, other cases, if you look at it, a large export house and all those things, they would have bought a lot of coffee with the anticipation that they are able to sell the coffees against the giant terminal one. So he has got say bought about 3000 tons okay of 300 lots and he, he was able to sell only 200 uh, 200 uh, lots of 2000 so 100 tons is still long 
and he could not get any he could not get any buyer to sell the balance of the so in such case also he has to move his january contract to march so that is what is called as the switch from one terminal month to the other other terminal months trading at price to be fixed okay so against the actual transactions are used to allow any price level that the position has achieved since it started however due to stricter stricter financial rules today it is common to agree on a price level that has been traded during the day as a double a will be performed to use the settlement price which is the closing price of a certain day or the traded price on that day so that is another that is the price to so switching Switching, I just explained. So I'll just uh, uh, go through this slide completely. Switching is used for a rolling a forward future position. This is done by closing a near month contract and opening a later month contract, thereby switching their position. A coffee exporter of a long physical coffee position must be later. As, as time moves on, first note is the approaches and future contract expires soon afterwards. Therefore, the exporter will close the near month, uh, near month contract with the future position, move the future position into more distant trading month. This will happen simultaneously when buying or selling the switch happens. So, this is what is the word switch used in the coffee trading. So, margins. So, Sellers must sell futures for their account to lock their sale price on the PTBF contract, and the buyer must buy futures for their account to lock in their price. The future account for both the parties stay open until the lots are transferred, offsetting the future longs, minus, and shorts should equal to zero. Okay. So to give you a better, to just to give an example, uh, one is the copy prices keeps moving. Okay, and we also. Uh, spoke about the word about the hedge. So when we buy a physical, uh, we sell the future. To give, to give an example, uh, we, we say like uh, we sold the market at $2,500. Okay, so then the market, as we also seen in the whole of this presentation that uh, market rates uh, every hour, weekly, monthly, and it can fluctuate every day. So, although we have hedged at $2,500, if the market goes to $3,000 till that position is sold, the difference in the position which has been hedged if it is open. So, if I don't have a sale contract of a roaster on the other side of it, if I am long, if the price goes from $2,500 to $3,000, I need to keep paying margins to the market every day. So, that means you get a Settlement account every day where the price which has gone up net up on the position which you are long, you have to pay the margin money every day. So you have got an initial mark. So trading in the future is not uh, free, that you just can go and uh, uh, start hedging it. So it is a technical, uh, technical and a financial instrument where if the market has moved up and if you are long on your position. To the extent of the position you are long, you have to keep paying the margin money when the market keeps going up, and you will start to receive margin money back if the market starts to come. So it is not one side where we need to fund only the market going up. You also had to send. Uh, you also had to pay for the uh, pay for the like you will also receive money from the exchange if the market starts to fall. We talk. We initially also we talked about the option. Uh, so, like uh, as the, as this market is uh, uh, it is a technical and a lot of financial instrument is involved in it. It also involves a lot of financial. So you need to pay the margin money. You need to pay the initial money. Okay, yeah. and you are also hitting your risk. So some of the uh, tra traders, uh, what they do is uh, they also do the risk management by using the option. Okay. This is risk management approach is buying or selling option on a future as a price insurance. Option gives buyers the right to buy or sell a stated quantity of a commodity at a specific price under a specific future date. These buy options are often referred to as an insurance. This insurance still entails cost, but it enables trader to limit potential losses in the future market 
without having to pay the margin calls which constrain their financial liquidity. So it's a very, very more uh, technical subject and it has got a lot of technical analysis which is being done and the uh, option premium depends on the risk and the element of the volatility and various other factors and uh, which is much more, I would say, complicated than the, than handling the future market. It needs more, uh, more knowledge and uh, more way of uh, writing the options and to buy it and to pay the premium. So it is a, it's a very, very technical subject. It is important to note that options are not actual insurance, but can be used uh, analogously. Calls and puts are the two basic types of options. So traders purchase call option, assuming that future market price will rise. It gives them right, but not obligation to buy underlying an agreed upon price known as a strike price. Options are embedded uh, into a preset time frame with a specific expiry date. And so you have got another option called put options or the mirror transaction of call option. They give buyer the right, but not obligation to sell the underlying commodity at an agreed upon future price at a specific time. Traders expecting uh, falling future market prices typically buy this kind of option. Call buyers can exercise their option and get delivery of a long position position uh, and put short. So that is about the uh, future uh, future market. So we talked about uh, London market, uh, lot size, uh, different contract months, and we covered uh, uh, first notice day, and we covered about uh, switching of the position. Okay, and we also covered, we also covered about the pricing, how export price is arrived, and how the farm gate price is worked out from that. So those are all the areas uh, where we covered how the price uh, price mechanism gets into it. So next is uh, coffee contracts. So what all uh, contracts uh, contractual terms? I'll little explain about it. The international coffee trade would be impossible without general agreement on basic sale conditions. So if we look at it, uh, as we know that uh, coffee is produced in more than 20, 30 countries and a different uh, cultural background, different uh, regulation, different country uh, loss and uh, loss available. So it makes uh, a trade like a coffee which is grown with so many countries and so many other countries which buys coffee, uh, which is a world coffee to have a different contracts uh, at a, for a different purpose. So this is one of the reason that all the coffee contracts are standardized. Okay, so to avoid the coffee trade has developed a standard contract. They is issued by the European Coffee Federation in Europe and Green Coffee Association in the United States are the most frequently used. So that means that anybody in any origin with the buy and sell contract, sell and buy coffee always should mention as the European Coffee Federation terms and conditions. Okay, so these contracts has got the uh, contracts are available on that uh, website. So if you go through that, uh, it will talk about uh, how the times has to be settled, what is price fixation, how the quality is handled. All the details of the contracts are available, and everybody is bound and abided by this European Coffee Federation contract. So this way, it makes. Uh, I think simple not to have for each country, each customer specific contracts to be made available. So we are, this way it has uh, coffee is a uh, with so many participants in the market and uh, everybody are accepting these contract terms and conditions. Then the same way, uh, the way we have so many buyers and the sellers, uh, uh, so buyers and the seller, we also have got a different currencies in different producing countries and different consuming countries. And not only coffee, most of the commodities today are all traded in USD. So coffee is a global commodity which is uh, traded worldwide on a daily basis. It would be very difficult to maintain this global liquidity if some coffees are priced in different currencies. So price risk management would also become very difficult if the market had to interpret the movements in both futures and currency prices for every hedging transaction. 
Moreover, 80 or 90 percent of the market is mainstream coffee that is priced or hedged against the New York or the London future market, both of which are also priced in US. So, if you look at it, uh, either a London market or the New York market is also getting traded or traded only in the dollar. And all the origins and all the coffee contracts, whichever the place it goes, also gets uh, traded in uh, traded in USD. New York is by far the world's uh, leading future exchange and would be most unlikely to move away from United States dollar. Finally, using dollar currencies in a single transaction could mean that a correct decision on the coffee price might be totally offset by a wrong assumption of the currency. Price. So. Each currency, like if you look at it, as I mentioned, uh, coffee trading is a very, very technical subject, uh, which has got a future market and the currency market. So currency market itself has got a various parameters, which are subject to its uh, import and export, uh, balance of payment condition, political condition, financial stability, forex reserves, so many aspects are involved in the currency trading. So, hence, this is the reason why coffee is also traded in US dollar and also most of the exports or most of the international trades also happen in US dollar. So, then comes uh, quality on export basis. So, we call it as a quality and description. So, we say that uh, this is the Indian coffee with screen size and so many defects. Uh, okay, so that is we call it the coffee and description. And we uh, coffee can be sold on fair average quality, and the coffee can be even uh, sold as uh, the coffee has to be have a even roast. The coffee can be sold on clean cup. A sample basis is the most uh, uh, accepted now, where uh, exporter sends the sample to the buyer, and the buyer accepts the sample, and sale happens basis a sample. And when delivery happens, the coffee has to be of the same similar sample. And then we also talk about the stock lot sample. That means a specific copy uh, is stored separately, and that sample is sent to the buyer, and he cups and he likes the coffee, then uh, he buys it. Then we call it the stock lot, stock lot sample. Type sample is mostly like uh, we talk about a bulk of a coffee. We take a sample and say that the coffee is going to be this way. So these are all the various uh, terms under which the coffee the quality we, we sell the uh, we sell the coffee. And these are all mentioned in the contract specifically on which basis the coffee is sold. So contract price. So the most frequently encountered traded terminology includes shipment period. So this is usually stated as a specific month or the time span during which the shipment is to be made as February or February March. Okay. So as I as I at the beginning of my presentation, I did mention that a roaster buys coffee for January to December at one go. Some of the roaster. Some of the roasters buy for the nearby, some of the uh, roasters buy for six months, some buy for the first quarter. So all this coffee, whenever the contract happens, so the shipment period has to be specifically mentioned because this also gets linked to the future price under which it gets fixed. So if you say that in the February, the February shipment will go against the March terminal. If it is March, it will go against the May terminal. So it is very, very important uh, thing in a contract to mention the shipping period. And uh, there are some occasions we say that we are going to ship from. So from means you get up from the date of the contract. You have to ship the coffee within 30 days and immediate shipment. So if we contract with immediate shipment condition, then shipment has to be done within 15, uh, 15 days from the uh, contract date. So contract date is important. So term which is used is important, whether it is immediate, whether it is from shipment or Shipment period. So this this specific thing is important in the contract when we enter with a with a buyer. So delivery commitment. So when we talk about uh, so we talk about most of the coffee gets uh, shipped on free on board. That means uh, the exporter has the responsibility and all the cost up to putting the coffee on board of a ship comes to is on the shipper. Okay, on the exporter. So then we have the other terms like free carrier. Then cost on freight, which means that uh, uh, cost and up to the ocean freight, up to the final destination is the account of the uh, account of the shipper. Then you also have the cost insurance freight, which means that uh, insurance cost and the freight is to the account of the exporter. Then we have got the net ship weight, net delivered weights, net delivered weights or the net landed weights or the condition under which the coffee reaches the final destination of the final warehouse. And the coffee is weighed, and the payment is made on the actual delivery of the coffee at the final final thing. 
And in case of a net shift weights, so, so there is a franchisee of 0.5%. So if the weight difference is uh, less than 0.5% of the shipment uh, uh, contract, then uh, there is no claim which can be done by the buyer. And uh, one more important with all these conditions, so one thing very, very important to note is uh, it is the exporter responsibility, both on quality and the quantity till the goods reaches the final destination of the final warehouse. So that means anything happens in terms of the quantity, you would have taken all the position, even although you sell the copy and free on board, exporter has still the responsibility till in terms of the weight and the quality till it reaches the final mirror. So that means the exporter carries the risk of the quantity and the quality till it reaches the final mirror. So this we have to be, be clear whenever we are doing an export trade. So last part of it, uh, logistics. Uh, so uh, the outbound, uh, as I mentioned, even in the uh, initial stage, NMPT is a major port of state and emerging port in South India. And uh, TUs are always uh, used for the shipment. So, most of the cases we use full container for shipping only the copy. So part consignment is very, very limited. Empty containers are transported by road to the mill and trailers and stuffed containers return to empty NFT on the same day. So these are the logistics. We are also port, uh, port in uh, Cochin and Chennai through with the coffee boats, but still as far as the coffee from India is concerned, uh, it is more about uh, shipping via NMPT. So thank you. Uh, hello everyone. The session is open for the Q and A. Uh, you can either drop your questions in the chat box or Sir, you can donor. Donor. Sir, what is the insurance cost for export? Coffee. Uh, it is it, it is. so you need to consult an uh, uh, your insurance company. So it again, as I mentioned, uh, mo most of the cases it is going to be free on board. So most of the coffee, like 70, 80 percent, gets. Uh, Shipped on free on board, so that means you have got the risk only to uh, ship it till the uh, on the ship. So you had to. It depends, like the if you are insuring everything, uh, the cost will be lower. But if you are uh, specifically taking for one or two containers, the things uh, things are going to be expensive. So you need to consult any of the insurance companies to get the cost. So it should not be more than one or two dollars a ton, just to give you an idea. It should be less than a ton, less than a dollar per ton. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. So I want to know, um, um, is this, we use the same port to import coffee beans as well? It depends on, uh, it is, it is mostly depends on the costing. So like, uh, uh, if you have got a factory, like if you look at it today in India, most of the, uh, the soluble factories who import the coffee are based in Hyderabad, Hyderabad, Vizak and this region. So for them, it doesn't make sense to import through, uh, Mango. So for them, the options are Chennai and Vishak Patana. So it depends on the costing and you need to decide uh, which one works better and you can import through any port. There is no restriction that you have to import from only this port. Oh, thank you. Sir, I have a question, sir. May I ask? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Yeah, like uh, coffee Arabica, you know that in Odisha also Kurabut having the coffee uh, coffee destination and the Kurabut coffee is now started their producing and their marketing. So how you see that export from the Odisha part in the uh, Kurabut, which is the Arukoveli and Kurabut coffee, uh, Arabica coffee is going to export from Vishakhapatnam or you go to Gopalpur or Paradip port. So exporting facility, but here the production level is much uh, lower than as compared to Karnataka based. Yeah, you see the question here, what happens is, uh... Today, uh, logistically, like uh, in the first slide only, I mentioned that uh, out of the coffee, like 70% uh, gets produced in Karnataka and about 95% uh, of the coffee gets produced in the southern state. So most of the yeah. exporters are based out of uh, here and it doesn't stop you from 
uh, shipping through Vizak and other things, but you don't have many of the exporter based out of it. And for the type of the volume, putting an infrastructure to that extent to do activities will be challenging, but it doesn't stop you from exporting through Vizak and other ports, or even Kolkata for that matter, it doesn't stop you. But uh, you need to have the expertise and the size to do, do those operations. That's the only thing. So otherwise, there is no restriction. Thank you, sir. Sir, one quick question. You told yeah. that the quality and the quantity has to be uh, borne by the exporter. Yeah. But we see okay. that usually in coffee, especially the fresh coffee, yeah. undergo a process called as moisture loss. Yeah. So during transit, if a moisture loss is there, uh, will it be passed on to the exporter or will the buyer understand that it's a moisture loss, which is a natural phenomenon? No, they won't. See, that is where, see, these contracts are all not designed only for India. So the entire commodity, the entire coffee trade, which is a global trade, which is happening, all the origins accept that it is to the exporter's account and it is a given fact and it is clearly stated in the contracts that uh, by a seller has the responsibility for the quantity and the quality till it arrives and any moisture loss is to the account of the export. Okay, so that means do you fill more than 50 kgs, maybe 50 kg, 100 grams in every bag to make sure that uh, you are giving exactly 50 kg per bag? Yeah, it is a 0.5% franchise is allowed if you have, again, it is on a contract. If it is a net arrived weight, then it is a net arrived weight. If you say net shift weight, then you get a franchise of 0.5% on a container. They don't weigh on per bag. It is a total uh, container which gets weighed. And if the uh, franchise is more, if the loss is more than 0.5%, they are, they are allow 0.5% as a franchise and the, for the balance, they affect the amount. Okay, 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 thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Actually, a very novice question that uh, I'm based in Ahmedabad. Let's say I want to export coffee. What are the uh, various infrastructure in terms of verticals or expertise or people that would be needed to carry out the entire project? See, you know, one thing is uh, I would I would I would put it up this way: the cost plays a vital role. See, coffee doesn't have margins. Okay. And uh, uh, so that clearly stay, clearly gets to state that you have to build infrastructure closer to closer to the supply chain. So that means the coffee is grown in Karnataka, you need to build the infrastructures in Karnataka. So that is that way you avoid the cost. So you can't if you do it in Ahmedabad or Delhi, it it involves a huge cost to tra transport all the goods. That's one point you have to keep in uh, mind. And uh, the infrastructure, see coffee, there are a lot of facilities available where you can buy the clean waste. And if you have got an expertise on how to export the coffee, if you can find the buyer, it still can be done. So it depends on your connect and the knowledge and how you can manage your risk. It depends on that. So without any infrastructure also, you can buy coffee from uh, uh, Curing Works and you can get it packed and uh, you can ship the coffee out of it. So it, it can be as simple as that, but at the same time, it can be complicated. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, sir. So, usually, what is the standard, uh, you know, container uh, weights? Uh, the, I think uh, one uh, you mentioned in London, uh, the this thing is uh, in 10, 10 tons, and in New York, it is in nineteen tons, I believe. But the containers will be uh, uh, what? What is the weight that usually a container? There'll be standard weights for each size, size of container. No? Okay. Uh, uh, I just want to understand that. Yeah. See, it is, see, coffee, coffee will be shipped uh, in uh, hijra bags, food grade hijra bags. Okay. Coffee can be shipped in one ton bag, and coffee can be shipped in bulk. So that means you just put a liner and you blow the coffee, and the coffee can be shipped. So this is uh, uh, three uh, well recognized system, and if you stuff a uh, bag, it is going to be 320 bags of 19.2 tons. And if you stuff one ton bag, it is 20 tons. And if you ship in bulk, it will be about 21 tons. So the quantity for the contract and the price fixation uh, has no link. Like uh, you, like if it is 19.2, you fix two lots. If it is 21, you fix two lots. So that way. Uh, fixation is on two lots, uh, whereas you can ship any quantities in uh, odd ons. Am I made clear? 
Hi sir. Uh, have yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes sir. I have a one question sir. Yeah. Yeah. What are the schemes for the exporters? Sir? Expo schemes for the exporters. Uh, see, one is I think uh, uh, we have today some drawback uh, which is available uh, duty drawback of some point one. So I don't know the exact percentage of that. And then uh, we have that uh, uh, new export incentive which is available, uh, which is about one point two five percent or something like that, which comes from the JDGFT. Uh, and then uh, Coffee Board has got. Uh, some special market, if you export uh, some specific market, there's some uh, incentive which comes from the coffee board. So these are the three prominent uh, incentives available for the exports. Sir, any idea to uh, know the graded one coffee, graded coffee prices, the curing one they will give. It is only fixed price or any other way to find the price for graded one. See, uh, see, coffee, uh, uh, you need to like very clearly understand there is no fixed price in coffee. So, as okay. long as the market is running eight hours a day, the same coffee, same quality can be five rupees cheaper now, five rupees cheaper after one hour. So, yes, it is as volatile as that. Yeah, please. Sir, I'm, yes, sir, I'm asking the, the Q. Sir, the curing, the curing people give, give a like a rates for a graded one, right? Yeah. yeah, any other way to find because some of the curings will say above the coffee market. So, how we will find a correct market price for a coffee graded one? You, you can't, you can't, there is no way. <laughs> then, the finally, curing, curing the prices are only final rates. Yeah, because there is a demand and supply, and they are the one who are uh, trading, they know. How the demand supply is working and uh, how the coffee prices are moving on every day and see it is very clear if you ask two or three exporters uh, two or three graders you know who is who is offering the cheaper you have to buy from them yeah sure sir sure sir thank you can i ask a question sir yeah please now start uh, ecosystem is in India. It's going on. Suppose now I want to start up. I want to do a uh, export business in coffee. So is it viable to do it and uh, for a young entrepreneur in uh, across the country uh, export business in coffee? It is. It is possible. So what could but be the investment side is required for a startup? Yeah, I would say see each container of see per kg of a coffee today is about two sixty to two seventy rupees. Yeah. Minimum. So, if you want to export one container, you can imagine what is the investment. Just to talk about one container. It's, it's so, it has, been, it has to be on a size and uh, minimum, minimum, I don't, I don't like, uh, I'm not discouraging anybody on this, but uh, it needs huge investment to trade in coffee. So, just to give you a reference, I said 250 rupees per kg or 260 per kg. And minimum uh, quantity is 20,000 kgs. So, you can just can multiply yeah, and find yeah. out uh, what is the investment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. So, but you, you can do it in uh, shared containers also, smaller lots. Uh, how, how does that work? Actually, see, supposing I am sharing uh, the container and just sending one ton, the investment uh, sizably goes down, right? If you look at it, most of the roast, see, the, uh, most of the coffee, that's what I also mentioned, is all the most of them are industrial roasters. So, okay, they buy tons and tons. Like, if you, they, they are not, they require hundreds of containers. It's not a half a container like that. So, that way, uh, half containers or this type of a coffee is, uh, to trade is very difficult. Uh, do you see that, uh, yeah, supposing uh, if you're looking at, uh, you know, the boutique, uh, uh, more more to say the speciality, uh, you know, the sector, then I think uh, there are demands uh, for those, uh, you know, special coffees will be much lesser than the industrial ones. So, what is the, what what is your thoughts on uh, the speciality the you know this thing between the speciality and the uh, commodity market to say? Speciality is a very niche market, okay, and uh, you need to really like uh, identify what is that niche in your product, 
and you need to find a buyer who is willing to buy. So then it's possible. Okay. And as such, uh, niche market as such for these specialties, that whole segment is not that very big. So it's a small segment, it is there, it is growing. Okay, but uh, how do you make your product something totally different is up to you what what the quality you can produce. So then it then it it works. So I have a question. Yes, please. I just wanted to know, like, according to you, what are the regions of the world that normally produce the best quality of coffees? As I mentioned, uh, see, when we talk about Robusta, it is uh, it is always about uh, India is at uh, first, then followed by Uganda. Okay, and these are the two regions uh, which have got a special coffee which can get into the blend. And now Vietnam started to produce uh, wet polished, uh, wet polished coffees and clean and color sorted coffees. So uh, all the exporters, of, uh, other origins are also making effort to improve the quality of the coffee. So that is something which is there. And when it comes to Arabica, it is Colombia, Kenya, Tanzania. Uh, these are the Honduras, high grown. Okay, uh, these are all the people. Uh, and again, Indonesia has got a. Uh, special region where uh, beautiful Arabica is grown. Okay, mm -hmm. so it depends on type of coffee and the different regions, and uh, mainly these are all the good coffees uh, which are available today. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Uh, doctor, actually, just to, just to add on to the same uh, question. Now, uh, you know, you have uh, trading on uh, one is the Arabicas will be Brazilian naturals. Then you have. Uh, Colombian miles and then other miles and in robustas you just have one robustas so is there a possibility that uh, you know there will be a uh, you know tagging for uh, indian because uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, the indian robustas uh, have a premium uh, so will there be a declassification uh, wherein even the market recognizes uh, you know uh, in uh, this thing with coffee, I mean, in this thing with quali quality, there's a differentiator uh, in with respect to quality. Yeah, see, to answer your question, we, uh, we already have a robust parchment to differentiate uh, regular uh, coffee with the uh, specialty. So, robust uh, parchment is mainstream specialty already, which has got a value. And we also, at some point of time, developed very good uh, monsoon robusta, but uh, again, off late. Uh, the demand for that has came down drastically, but uh, if we look at it, we have uh, definitely we have got uh, honey parchment, robusta, which is there. Mm -hmm. So there is some differentiated product which is there in robusta also, and Indian again. If you talk about it, and even some other countries are also started to produce uh, robusta parchment, mass robusta. Uh, Tanzania is producing, Uganda is producing. So even in robusta, we are getting a value addition uh, by doing a extra processing at the field level. हेलो या सर हम एक रोस्टिंग यूनिट का प्लान कर रहे हैं सेटअप करने का करने का सो उसके लिए गवर्नमेंट का कुछ सब्सिडी अवेलेबल है सर दैट आई एम आई एम आई एम नो क्लू बिकॉज़ आई एम नॉट इन दैट सेगमेंट प्लीज ओके सर नो इशू थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून सर या फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड जस्ट लाइक टू विश यू अ वेरी हैप्पी न्यू ईयर टू स्टार्ट ऑफ विद and uh, likewise to everybody else uh, you know joined over here so just wanted to ask a question so of course would need your level of suggestion so basically we are in uh, import export house we are merchant traders and currently my brother is in uganda right now for the last 2 years and uh, we are coming up with our own brand inshallah and we are coining it organic natural coffee it's a fully washed processor the sl is uh, number 14 It's medium dark roasted, and uh, it's the altitude it is grown on is twelve hundred meters to thirteen fifty meters. It's Arabica basically. Uh, so we are growing it in the tropical savanna highlands of the Nile, sir. So would uh, I mean in the in the coming month of October, inshallah, we will be having our uh, export cultivation season. So, sir, would really want to understand inputs from your side of uh, you know importing it to countries like India or to, you know exporting it to um, uh, European countries from African nations regions. Okay. See. Si. African uh, European uh, nations, you are free to export. There is no restriction. Okay, and you have got all the possibilities which helps us. 
but uh, as far as uh, the information or the knowledge I have got is uh, the import duty into India is uh, more than 100%. So that means we import coffee uh, into India from Uganda. Uh, you have to pay huge duty, which will not be uh, making effective uh, purpose in a big way. So if you are uh, importing small coffees and selling it, it's possible. But if you buy a big quantity and get into India, you have a huge duty which has to be paid. So that doesn't make uh, uh, economical sense actually. To uh, import to export it to India uh, currently. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Good you. Answer. Hello. Yes. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, I just wanted to know what are the various uh, places or websites or you know institutions that can help us out in terms of finding buyers in the targeted markets. See, you you have got a coffee board website which has, which gives you all the details about the Indian uh, coffee cultivation in terms of costing or the which are the market it goes. But there is no website which will give you uh, data on who are all the buyers. There is no okay. nothing. So these are all established over the long period of time by extensive. So the best place is always about the fairs and the exhibitions which are participates, which happens in most part of the country. So those are the place where you can uh, try to get a buyer and the sellers. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I just want to know, like being a farmer, if I have to like uh, uh, export like small quantities, for example, like one or two tons, like I grow my own coffee and process it and sell it. For example, I'm selling it to one of the country. Uh, do I have to get like a proper license and get registered with the coffee board and everything? Like, yes, I think the, see there's a procedure. So because uh, you can't export without having your own import export code, then you can't. Uh, you need to have the certificate uh, from coffee board. Then you need to have the FICOs and a uh, lot of other statutory things which you, which you need to have. You need to have a bank account. So there are a lot of uh, basic setups which are required for any export to happen. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, I want to know, like, uh, generally, uh, uh, how many months we can store a coffee uh, uh, from the from the uh, grown date? Uh, so, it's see, first and foremost, uh, uh, you need to be clear that uh, if you are a grower, uh, if you are talking about a uh, high elevation places and high rainfall areas, then those things are not suitable for a coffee storage. Okay. okay. And normally, normally if you talk about a wash Arabica, it's uh, life is much lesser about eight to nine months. Okay. But whereas Robusta and all can go up to 12 to 15 months, provided it is stored in a much drier place in a good uh, ventilated warehouses. Good ventilated warehouse. Sir. That means yeah. in the future contract, if we made like the next year today, today like uh, in the December, uh, uh, December we uh, we have to deliver next December. Okay, mm -hmm. that means one year contract as per yeah. uh, terminal this one. So as per river uh, information, eight to nine months Arabica we can store. Then how we can able to deliver in those scheduled date? Except Arabica, rest of things can be messy. Today, you've got various mechanisms to do it, actually. Okay. You've got a green pro bags. Okay. You've got a ventilated warehouses where you can maintain the temperature a little bit and it has to be properly maintained. So, in the, such cases, it's possible. So, you've got some mechanisms through which it can be done. Uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, the example, if I purchase, uh, generally, I'm asking, if I purchase yeah. uh, uh, coffee, uh, coffee beans from the uh, uh, curing center in that person he is having those kind generally they are having those kind of storage uh, uh, facilities a lot of facilities they are seen in in uh, coffee growing region there are a lot of uh, uh, people who have invested in uh, curing works and uh, with a lot of uh, warehousing facilities and most of them are all uh, doing and giving a services more than uh, two three decades now it is all they all have, they have the expertise in that so they will get a, a additional charges if i purchase the same uh, uh, curing center 
and yeah. I, I need a delivery like uh, after six months. So, so uh, uh, advanced as per the payment terms, uh, if I made like 30% or 20% as per the contract, and yes. generally they has to take any uh, like uh, rent uh, for those six months uh, as a rental period for storage. See, it all depends on uh, their position and their terms and conditions. I can't comment on anything. So normally, the condition is coffee is always a cash and carry. So if the, today is the X price, I have to pay the pay the whole price, and there is a warehousing charges for it. And there is a if you are, if there is some delayed payment, uh, you need to make the payment. So normally, all the local trade which happens is all the all for the spot price spot market with a delivery within fifteen days with a warehousing and interest free. Beyond anything that you have to make hundred percent payment, and uh, they have the right to charge the various charges, uh, and it depends on individuals and uh, what they really offer as a service. So there is nothing standard, and there is no regulation to say yes or no for it. Is there any government facility like any punishment, uh, 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 like for this uh, vegetables, those kind of things, uh, the seeds, those kind of things? So they have uh, uh, like uh, storage uh, capacity, like uh, what you call that uh, warehouses uh, from the organized by the government. Similarly, yeah, from the similarly uh, the same type, of the government will have any kind of facility for this coffee producers. Uh, that I have no clue actually. I don't know so what is there in the pipeline on the discussion. I'm not sure because I'm not from the coffee board, so I don't know what is happening at the government side on this aspect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, you, usually, which uh, you know, port is the I think Europe is the largest uh, consumer of Indian coffee. Yes. Uh, now, which port uh, is the major port? Hamburg or is it? Uh, it's all Hamburg, Ant Hamburg, Antwerp, Genoa. Trish. So it goes all all around. There is no all, one. All, all the the... Okay. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. As an Indian grower, if I want to uh, sell my coffee, uh, uh, specialty coffee, the uh, GI indicated uh, to selected uh, uh, buyers in Japan. Uh, not a huge quantity, say about uh, 500 to 600 kg uh, uh, green coffee. Uh, can you tell me the procedure, sir? How should I, what is, what is the procedure I have to follow? The first is you have to find a buyer uh, who is in Japan, who is interested to buy. Yes. So there is a, there's a, there's a starting point. Then you need to, as I said, no, like there is a uh, lot of uh, government uh, stuff which needs to do with including the bank account with uh, a lot of licenses to do it. So once you have all those things, they should be like you have to have a registration with coffee board. And the ICU you have to take ICO permit. Okay, then you have to take a FIDO certificate. Then uh, you have to find a physician authorities. Okay, then you need to be registered with the DG, uh, D, IEAC code. You need to get from the JDGFT. So these are all the minimum requirement to export anything. So not only coffee, any export, you need to have all these basic documents first. Uh, the reason why I asked is because I sent a sample by post, uh, by uh, India post uh, to uh, China, but it got stuck, never cleared. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, those are the hiccups actually. How do we overcome that? Sample itself, itself didn't reach the uh, party. So, so it's, it's always a challenging, sir. I, I, I would say that uh, uh, trying to export a 500, 600 kgs is always a big challenge. Okay. So first is to find a buyer. So the most important challenge is to find a buyer receives your coffee is the first challenge. So then rest of the things follows on that. So, and as I mentioned, the coffee 90% is a industrial product where uh, most of them talk about on a lot of container. So the coffee evolves more on a volume, uh, volume. And yes, uh, specialty is a very niche market, which needs a lot of effort to uh, export it directly. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, why hasn't uh, Liberica, that is the excellent, sir, that uh, even there are a lot of growers in the major regions, though the quantity is very small, still uh, uh, in terms of taste profile, it is better than the Robusta. However, it is not as good as the Arctica. Uh, still, you know, we have to mix it with the Robustas or, uh, you know, sometimes with the Arabicas and said to why then their uh, demarcation or there is no buyer looking for that uh, is that what you no they, they see as i mentioned now see see, to, see today i would say 60 or 70 percent of the coffee is bought by uh, six to seven big roasters in the world 
Okay, so finding a buyer for these sort of a, a smaller things is a very, very difficult, very difficult. Okay. Hi, sir. Uh, I have another one question. Like, uh, for a grading purpose, they will use coffee beans no? for A, double A, triple A. In no. one turn, how, how much we will get a triple A and A or A, a B? How can we calculate that, sir? See, that is uh, depends on uh, which type of the coffee. Okay. So, whether it is Arabica plantation or whether it is Robusta cherry. Okay. Uh, it depends. It depends on the type of it. So normally the standard is uh, if you take a plantation, uh, a plus you should get about fifty two to fifty five percent. Okay. In case of a robusta cherry, your triple A will be only about three four percent. So it depends, and it's all by the uh, experience and uh, working for uh, so many years. Uh, each each of the uh, Processors have their own database to do it. So normally, if you want to ask, nobody will share also. So that that comes by the experience, and you have to get into the trade and do some uh, pilot projects to uh, pilot projects. Then you then you will come to know. It's not very difficult. It is available data, and I think probably you have to do some Google search. So offhand, if you ask, nobody will nobody will be share because it has come 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 to them by a lot of experience. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Hi, sir. Uh, Rahul, Hi. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation you just made. I have, it's going to be a question regarding the financial requirements. <clears throat> so I'll keep it very straight so that it doesn't become more clear. So we understand that, you know, there's a lot of investment comes into as an exporter and a lot of risk which we carry when we do this. And you being an exporter in industry, industry, you pretty much understand very well where we come from. Now, the real question is that if we look at from the pilot project, uh, we look at, okay, we start with one project, one container, one buyer, that's it for one season. And we look at an investment of 65 to 70 odd lakh rupees for we need to put in and, uh, you know, put cash and carry until the, the payment is been received. We understand all the risk, but looking at from perspective from an initial player and we, we understand there's a lot of barriers to entry in this industry and we would love to enter into the industry. And I see a lot of people already here or would want to get into the industry. Of export, uh, looking at a total sales value of 70 to 75 lakh rupees, what kind of an investment we should be ready for risk management and how much differential we can actually put off towards using the financial institutions so that we don't go bankrupt if we go wrong in the first deal. What is the, what are the avenues for us to explore? If you could give us some light on that, I'm not asking for a direct answer. I'm just saying, just give us a way hand, way, give us, give us a way. That this is the way you should go ahead and find other ways, if it is possible. Thank you. Hey, uh, see, it, it, this comes a uh, different parts of the different organizations. So, which we cannot like. We are one is we are depending on a like if you want a funding, you are depending on the bank. So, when you're depending on the bank, uh, bank has got its own ways to uh, fund it. So, if you say, okay, I'll put twenty lakhs, how much of the money bank is willing to give for your thing? So it is a risk assessment which is done by the bank, not by us. So you, you yeah. need to have a very good uh, connect with the bank where you can we need to be able to pull out the money from the bank. So that is one issue which you need know, to tackle. Second, the second aspect you have to always tackle is about the currency and how you hit the currency. That is one thing which you need to do it. So that has to be very very clear. And the third the third big challenge is getting all the like uh, one or two one or two containers uh, having a statutory compliances with. Uh, uh, things which you need to obtain before you even start your activities is the biggest challenge. So it involves a lot of uh, coordination, a lot of registration with the government, which has to be done. So that is another side which you need to look into it. So yeah, and and the risk, like the it is a very volatile product, and uh, uh, you have to be very careful on how you manage your volatility. So so, so that like uh, you cover your basic price to uh, price and exporting, and you get your realization. So these are the three areas. So it's more more you have to depends on how you get connected with your bank and how much of the bank is willing to do it. And uh, I cannot give a suggestion on how the banks are going to treat it. Okay, so no, it finally it. lies with them. I understand. Another fold of question which follows it's a prequel question I asked. I'm asking later. 
that like we're getting into the market the main question comes along uh, do we do we know that we can actually go directly to the farmers itself and make a deal with them so that or we can go to the curing works which makes it much easier for an exporter but what do you think that walking into the industry for the first time i would love to directly deal with the farmer but which is the most safest way for us to approach the market should we go to the curing works to begin with and then reach to the farmer or we directly go to the farmer and do everything else like warehousing logistics taking care of the packaging everything on our own self what do you suggest if provided the farmer does not have its own processing unit one of, one of the biggest biggest risk in the coffee is about the delivery one of the big risk so yeah. whether you talk about uh, uh, we have seen defaults uh, from all the participants in the market okay so that means like the it's a product is so volatile okay uh, uh, today he can be a, uh, a leading player okay uh, so one of the big big risk we always face in a coffee trade is about the non delivery so from the time you fix the price from the time you delivers if the coffee prices moves up drastically you have an element of the risk so okay. as long as you are able to manage uh, with x y z then you are there actually so because we have seen uh, prices movement uh, uh, which loses 50 70 80 lakhs 90 lakhs in 10 20 metric tons contracts also so that way uh, that risk management is the most uh, appropriate thing which has to be taken so it doesn't matter who who you deal with but we have seen uh, uh, defaults happening in all the spheres but again sir the commitment towards the delivery of the product is not something which i have in hand the only the only thing which i can barter is the trust and definitely a transaction of money but would it be much more trustful trustful to go with a farmer or a curing work is that what i'm asking i'm not saying again give me a yes or a no just give no. me a yay or a nay on towards which direction is much more plausible like I, i'll give you plausible reliability any day <laughs> you yeah. are the matter but i'll tell you that which direction should be forced into it depends on your relation with whom you are dealing it say i said like uh, see you need to manage that risk say with whom you are dealing and till the coffee is delivered how you manage your risk and how you follow it up is the most important it doesn't matter with whom you deal end of the day uh, your follow up your uh, commitment to take delivery uh, as soon as possible so uh, normally what we suggest is keep money in your hand take delivery in your position make the payment so then your risk is already eliminated so that's what we always recommend uh, don't give any long term commitment by the time the market can change drastically yes, so period of say period of say one one uh, one week and all is always fine because we don't see that big volatility within that period and if you give a longer period for the delivery it's always a risk it's always a risk that's a, that's a cash and carry we are carrying then yeah 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 fair enough sir just another one another another question and that's i will close on that uh the london terminal and even for the arabica coffee the biggest question which comes across to us as exporter is who's actually deciding the differential we understand it's a physical market conditional uh, you know transpondent but who is actually making this decision of differentials because everybody has their own say in it and we also understand because we don't want to hurt the sentiments of the market or the farmer or the grower or the producer or the processor who actually makes that decision of a differential sir it's getting way too hard for us to understand that okay who's deciding this even even up to 20 years we are not understood <laughs> okay okay fair enough so we can, we take what market gives okay is that what you're saying sir yeah exactly because it's ultimately the market condition which decides the differential not me and not anybody see we see we export uh, around 10% of the indian coffee okay Correct. and if you ask me uh, sir are you deciding on the differential what is the different no fair enough thank you for all the answers and clarification sir thank you thank you we would love if we could be in connect in future thank you thank you thank you hello yes uh so i have a question uh, see right now the new york terminal is around 182 dollars so how do we arrive at uh, how do you calculate uh, per uh, kilo cost in indian rupees and what is the uh, charges for uh, what are the differentials for when you do it different grades like double a a b c what how do you calculate those as i said no see these are all the trade the trade kept secrets between the prices so the best way for you to approach market 
and find out what is the uh, prices for each of the grades in the market. So if you ask, if you uh, ask anybody, they'll give you a price for each of the grades. So coming back to your other other question is uh, to convert uh, New York market is in cents per LB. So you need to multiply by 22.041. 421, uh, so that, that gets you the price of the terminal market in uh, dollars per ton. So you need to uh, multiply the, that by uh, your current, uh, today's currency rate. So that will give you price at uh, rupees at a terminal level. So then you can, you, uh, whatever the local price, what the curing works are giving you, you, that you divide by same, uh, by dollar and then divide by 22. And whatever the difference you get is what the uh, what is the differential actually that you need to calculate, and you have to definitely add your cost. So basically, you need to look at what the clean coffee price you are getting, add what is your exporting cost uh, from uh, uh, from uh, taking delivery from the uh, from the curer till putting on board. You calculate you calculate your interest cost, okay, and then you divide. Then you get what is the price at which you can sell. So. And you you know what is the market level? The difference of the two is your uh, differential. Hope I made clear. But can you please repeat that, sir? How do we calculate? You are keeping in mind one eight one ninety right now. Sorry. So go back. Go back to see first. Go back to what is the INR price? Uh, you ask a curer uh, which grade you want a coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that you divided by today's currency, uh, today's exchange rate. Then you add your shipping cost. Then you get what is the uh, price you are supposed to, uh, like add your margin, then you know what is the price at which you can sell. And then you look at the terminal, terminal and uh, sense to metric ton conversion is uh, 22.0421. So then you arrive at what is the uh, what is the differential you are at. So market versus uh, what is the price you are expecting. That is what is the differential. Okay, sir, I got it. Ready? Okay, right. Thank you, sir. A quick question I have. Uh, I forgot. How 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 do we vet a CHA? We understand CHA is a very important part of our process when it comes to port and everything comes to the port. This is his responsibility starts to the core. Uh, being uh, being a learner in the industry, you cannot vet a master. We understand, but how do we understand to find? And we understand this is very important as a CHA agent. So, how do we vet a CHA agent that you know we are actually going to the right person? If you can give us, you go to the port. Okay, wherever the port is there, or you Google it. Who are all the best logistics, best CHAs in that port, and you contact them. So it's available. There are plenty of CHAs in each of the port. Not only one or two. And there are people who service only the big big ones. There are people who service even the small one. Yes. They are available. So only either you have to Google or go to the port and find out uh, find out who are the CHS. They'll give you the list. And the DGFT and is the one who's giving the licenses to CHS, CHS for two CHS, right? Yeah. Okay. So that is the license we need to check as a CHS. Yeah. CHS uh, CHS will do the uh, custom export clear the custom clearance. They do it because they have the license. They know the procedure. And they do the custom plans, but you need to have your own uh, import export port from the JDGFT. Yeah, we got, we got that. Yeah. Okay. So they have their own licenses, right? CHA agents have yeah, their own. CHA, CHA has got the license. Uh, they know the procedures in the customs office and they are the one who can do the services. And that CHA licenses also have a expiry rate that we need to check that they have a license, which is valid itself. No, no, no. The, those things uh, not that very important actually. Not important. All right. Perfect. Thank you. So while we use this uh, switching, yeah, uh, it's. I think you mentioned that uh, supposing it's a robust contract, which was for January and. Uh, we are not able to honor the um, delivery commitment. It goes on to the March uh, contract, yeah. right? Yeah. So what is the leeway? Supposing if it's one or two days delay uh, or is it 
on the day uh, or before or even if it's one day there is a buffer there is no buffer actually so the contract should get fixed and by end of the month uh, you are supposed to shape but today a lot of import a lot of uh, importers who import they give a little bit of a flexibility you need to have a proper communication with the person who we have a contract so then it will help you so then you to understand that uh, Okay, they accept your uh, see communication is one of the most important aspect in the puppy trade. And if you communicate and they, if they still accept again that month delivery is fine. If they don't accept, then you have no chance because legally they are right to claim. But uh, it is flexible. But proper communication and proper uh, documenting will help you. Okay, and uh, the last one thing, sir. Uh, recently there was a change in that. Uh, old coffee re you know this thing as uh, new uh, in the warehouses i i read an article and i'm i'm sure uh, being a grower i don't understand that could you throw some light upon that i think it was three two two months or uh, yeah see one thing one thing yeah i i'll tell you one thing see uh, the prices which are paid in the terminal market is at the level of the market at which it is uh, it is getting traded and uh, market says this is the premium or the discount for the qualities which we offer so that's the first thing so we need to understand that if you deliver it to the market uh, hypothetically you get what what is the price which gets quoted on the terminal market at delivered price so, so you need to deliver at that price so that means uh, you have to take your shipping cost ocean pride insurance interest and then there is a grading cost which will happen at the exchange and with all those costs it should work out for you to tender it so then only the tendering works so the way that the, today the prices are traded it is trading much above the uh, coffee price which is which the terminal is going to accept it so that means nobody is going to tender the coffee that is the point number one which i want to just make it things clear so that means the new the condition which you have been uh, mentioned today is in the past the coffee which is uh, there as certified had a certain validity period i don't remember how much how much is the period so once the coffee is delivered and if it is certified by the board it had a certain validity of say 6 months or something like that at the same time in the board like uh, you say you send a coffee for tendering and the, uh, you do the grading and if the gr grading fails you you could have applied for a regrading so say coffee which is uh, which got rejected, you could ask for them the regrading. You need to just pay the regrading cost. So now the terminal has come back and said that henceforth no more regrading. So once the result is failed, it's failed forever. So the regrading is not accepted. So that's what is the uh, meaning of it. So such coffees will be if it's uh, rejected, then what will happen? Uh, it will be sent back to origin or. Uh... It will be no, they say uh, it is the it is the importer's responsibility to liquidate that coffee in the spot market. So there is a spot market which a lot of uh, roasters buy the coffee from the spot market. So the players oh, who, okay. does, uh, who does all these things are a big players. They know all the risk and the elements on it. And if it uh, doesn't get accepted, they sell it to some of the roasters. Oh, okay, okay. So I guess uh, the session time is over and uh, I would like to extend my sincere regards to Sudhinta sir for conducting such an informative and interactive, interacting session. I I guess all the participants were very happy with the presentation and also which followed a very interactive session. So from on behalf of Coffee Board, I extend my sincere uh, regards to uh, Sudhinta sir and all the participants who took active participation in this uh, online session. For more information, you can visit the Coffee Board's website. Uh, Coffee Board also hosts Atal Incubation Center, uh, which is an incubation center for the uh, coffee uh, entrepreneurs, which provides, uh, which conducts various programs like Vitrayam for the exporters, there is Vartharamba and FA Conceptor for uh, uh, budding entrepreneurs. So you can visit Atal Incubation Center website as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, like that uh, comes to the end of the session. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.